Would you mind not coming to our wedding or our new home? You'll just ruin the mood. If you don't like it, we can just divorce. Susie said this with a condescending look. Helen seemed flustered by Susie's attitude. It's just too much to treat your in-laws like that. She could at least be a bit more polite. What did we ever do to Susie? All we did was greet her with, we hope to get along from now on. What was so wrong with that? Susie clearly has a lot of growing up to do. She needs to be set straight. My name is Clara, a 55-year-old housewife. I work and also manage the household. My husband and I have a son named Kellen. He's grown up to be a fine young man and now works at a top-tier company. After years of raising our child, I was enjoying a relaxed life with Lucian, who had retired a bit earlier than me. We sometimes reminisced about our younger days and felt the emptiness without Kellen, but it was a refreshing change. We were thoroughly enjoying our current life and were confident about the future. Then, some wonderful news came our way. Kellen had found someone he wanted to marry. She was a junior at his company and they had been dating for a few years. Our beloved son, whom we had raised with so much care, had found happiness. How could we not be overjoyed? He had already proposed and it seemed Susie had happily accepted. They wanted to formally introduce her to us. We were excited to meet the woman Kellen had chosen and even rearranged our plans and picked out nice outfits for the occasion. Surely, if Kellen chose her, she must be a wonderful person. She's probably sweet and very feminine. I was so excited to meet her that even my colleagues noticed saying, You seem to be in high spirits lately. Finally, the day of the introduction arrived. We waited in a private room at the designated restaurant when Kellen and a young, lovely woman walked in. She must be the woman he wants to marry. We began introducing ourselves. Nice to meet you. I'm Susie. I have been dating Kellen. We introduced ourselves in return, nodding politely. The conversation flowed, discussing Kellen and Susie's past. Eventually, the topic shifted to work. I would like to become a homemaker after we marry. I believe women should support their homes. Oh, uh, if you ever want to work, you should. I work too. You work even though you're a mother-in-law? Susie looked surprised and then displeased. Did I say something wrong? I think the idea that women should only be homemakers is outdated. Women can pursue careers now. Susie's face darkened even more. Kellen and Lucian both sensed the tension. What should I do? Was it wrong to express my opinion? I hesitated and then Susie blurted out, You must be so pitiful. What? I tilted my head, not understanding. Pitiful? Why would she say that? Isn't it happier to be a homemaker not having to work and just staying at home? It's easier than earning money. You probably weren't allowed to, right? So sad. Uh, that's not true. I'm very happy. My job is fulfilling. Lucien has already retired, so I don't have to worry about household chores. Wait, you work, but your husband doesn't? Aren't men supposed to earn money? It must be tough having a lazy husband. Don't say that. We chose this life together. No matter how much we tried to explain, Susie's pitying attitude didn't change, even though it's different. We chose this life because it's what we wanted. Why do we have to be criticized like that? As I was feeling frustrated, Susie hurled even more hurtful words at us. Susie, enough is enough. Stop disrespecting my parents. Kellen intervened, clearly unable to stand the tension any longer. But Susie wasn't convinced. Why won't you understand me? I just said that because I felt sorry for your mom. What's wrong with that? She really is pitiful. The two began to argue in front of me. It's my fault. I shouldn't have said anything. Blaming myself, I watched the unfolding drama. I never thought Susie would be like this. I can't forgive you for saying that to my mom. We're calling off the engagement. As the argument heated up, Kellen's declaration left Susie in shock. Wait, I have already told my parents and friends about our engagement. You can't just call it off. It seemed Susie had prematurely announced their engagement to everyone she knew. She approached Kellen, her face pale. 
I really love you, Kellen. I want to be with you. Watching her grovel was honestly nauseating, but this was too cruel. They had been doing well until now, and it seemed rash. To end everything over a momentary disagreement. Maybe Susie could change, maybe she just lost her temper. Acting on fleeting emotion could have lasting consequences for Kellen's future. Kellen, why not forgive her? She's apologizing. I don't mind. I'm sure Lucian feels the same, right? Lucian nodded. Yes. It seemed he understood my perspective. You know, a side of Susie we haven't seen. Uh, it might be too hasty to call off the engagement without considering all the good in her. Hearing Lucian's words, Kellen pondered. Maybe you're right. In the end, Susie sincerely apologized for her behavior. Even after their engagement, Kellen seemed wary of Susie's attitude. He made it clear if she showed any disrespect towards us, he would reconsider their future together. Time passed, Kellen and his fiancée were making steady progress with their wedding preparation. Just recently, they sent out the invitations. Moreover, they decided to build a new home to start their married life in. Although it's still under construction, I have been invited by Kellen several times to check out the progress. Even though it's not finished yet, you can already tell it's going to be a beautiful house. The contractors have been very professional and I couldn't help but feel proud thinking, that's my son for you. One day, Kellen invited Lucian and me to see the progress of their new home. Lucian in particular was very impressed. Every time he saw it, he would say, what a great house. I bet Kellen was pleased to see such reactions. Kellen enthusiastically showed Lucian the plans, explaining, this area will be like this. Afterwards, we decided to grab some coffee. Kellen, Susie, Lucian and I went to a nearby cafe. While sipping our coffee and discussing the wedding and new house, Susie suddenly blurted out, You know, mother-in-law is getting a bit too comfortable. Uh, what do you mean? I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. And you think just because Kellen likes you, you can act this way? Isn't that just being arrogant? Why would you say that? Did I do something to upset you, Susie? Confused by her accusations, I asked her why she felt this way. She sighed heavily and said, Look, can you and father-in-law just not come to the wedding or the new house? You will just ruin the mood. If you don't like it, we can just divorce. What? I was taken aback by her words. Kellen, looking panicked, called out Susie. But unlike before, she didn't apologize. Instead, she looked proud as if she had accomplished something. Why was she treating me this way? I thought she had changed her attitude, but it seems I was still an intruder in her eyes. Inside Susie, I remained a nuisance. But I'm not the type to just take this lying down. Susie needs to understand her place. After the cafe incident, Kellen was furious with Susie and considered breaking off the engagement, but I had a plan. I told him to go ahead with the wedding as planned, and if he wanted to break up, to do it later. You think you can handle this? Or do you just know you can't win against me? Susie smirked. I asked her again, so you really don't want us at the wedding? Yes, I would rather never see you or father-in-law again. Susie said with a smile. I warned her. Are you sure about this, Susie? You might regret it. Why would I regret it? I get to have my wedding without any interruptions. I'm happy. Hearing your words, I just nodded. Kellen had told me he wanted us at the wedding, but if Susie felt this way, it might be best if we didn't attend. However, seeing Kellen's worried face, I whispered, I have a plan. And his expression darkened. I am not one to just sit back after being treated this way. In fact, I am the type who needs to get even. Something Kellen and Lucian know all too well. Seeing our exchange, Lucy asked, what are you up to? But I just brushed it off. Nothing at all, we won't attend the wedding or visit your new home, so don't worry. I replied with a smile and Susie said, that's a relief, and laughed. In Susie's mind, she probably envisioned a perfect wedding day. Who would make that dream come true for her after all she's done? Does she really think everything would go smoothly without any hitches? Is she living in a fantasy world? I had to hold back my laughter as I continued with the preparations for the wedding day. A few months later, the big day arrived. As promised, we didn't attend the ceremony. 
While relaxing at home, my phone suddenly rang as expected. It was Susie, mother-in-law, please come to the venue right now, hurry! Susie sounded frantic. I almost laughed, thinking I knew this would happen, but held back and asked what happened. Susie then began to explain the situation at the wedding venue. As she entered the venue excited about our big day, she greeted each guest. However, almost every guest asked, Where's Clara? Each time she was asked, Susie would reply, She is busy. But every time she said that, the guests seemed disappointed, as if they were genuinely saddened by my absence. At first, Susie could handle it. But as more and more guests asked the same question, it became too much for her. Even her close friends asked, Isn't Clara coming? Reaching her breaking point, Susie shattered a wine glass on the floor and shouted, Why is no one paying attention to me, the bride? In her frustration, she even bad-mouthed me, saying, What's so great about that old lady? The atmosphere in the venue turned icy. Whispers began to circulate that Susie had intentionally not invited me. The mood of the wedding was ruined. Despite being the bride, Susie was met with cold stares. She felt uncomfortable as guests whispered about her. Please come and fix this. It's all because of you, mother-in-law. Susie's voice was filled with anger and blame. Who would want to go after being spoken to like that? If you're asking for a favor, shouldn't you ask nicely, maybe apologize like you did before? Why should I do that for someone like you, mother-in-law? Hurry up, I'm about to change my dress. Do you want me to go back into that awful atmosphere? I'm the star today. She must have been really struggling with the mood at the venue. No matter what I said, all Susie could say was, Come quickly! I couldn't help but chuckle at her desperation. Certainly being treated like an outcast on one's wedding day, a significant moment in life must be tough. Feeling sorry for Susie, I promised to come to the venue. Relieved, Susie took a deep breath. Lucian and I dressed in our finest attire and headed to the venue mentioned in the invitation. I must admit, my son chose a wonderful place. The venue's interior was neither too lavish nor too simple, making it very comfortable. As we arrived in the waiting room, Susie approached, saying, You finally made it! Led by Susie into the hall, the moment the guests saw me, they flocked around. It's Clara, the real deal! It's an honor to see you! We thought we wouldn't see you today! Seeing the guests showering me with such admiration, Susie looked utterly bewildered. Why is everyone fuzzing over mother-in-law? I'm the bride today. One of the guests offered some advice, leaving Susie in shock. There is a reason I am so adored. I am the CEO of a major global corporate group. While Susie seemed unaware, I have been interviewed on TV and in magazines multiple times, making me quite famous domestically. Most guests probably attended the wedding more in hopes of seeing me than celebrating Susie's big day. Unaware of this, Susie's derogatory comments about me in front of the guests were about to backfire. That's not fair! Discovering my unexpected trump card, Susie collapsed in disbelief. Who's the real victim here? The wedding proceeded without further issue, but Kellen eventually broke off the engagement with Susie. Though Susie's attitude towards me changed, often calling me the best mother-in-law ever, it seemed she couldn't undo the discomfort she had caused. Susie was held responsible for the wedding expenses and the cost of the under-construction house. Rumors spread about Susie's terrible behavior towards me, leading her friends to distance themselves. Even her parents were outraged, making her home life unbearable. Meanwhile, I am nearing retirement and have been preparing for my successor, Helen. Having gained experience and knowledge in a top-tier company is the obvious choice. My family and employees are my cherished companions. I intend to protect and care for them as much as possible.